two hats I wear. One is uh, president of the Restaurant Association and I've also been a restaurateur for 30 years. I think the World Cup will have a great positive effect uh, on the restaurant and cafe sector. Uh, if you think about it, uh, the number one activity for inbound uh, visitors is eating out and drinking and so we're well placed to provide that. Uh, I also think um, if we take a longer term view on the effect, you know, we want these people to leave, leave our shores and go back with some great uh, memories of uh, eating and drinking in our bars and cafes and restaurants in New Zealand. We're preparing for the World Cup in a number of ways. O obviously uh, all uh, leave is cancelled for the staff, uh, that's a given. And, and just a lot of planning is, is going to go into it, you know, glassware and, and uh, change and uh, all our equipment serviced. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't want to service call out, uh, you know, on, on the Friday night of the final. I think businesses in the next couple of months need to sit down with um, key staff and put their thinking caps on and just think of, apart from the regular uh, sequence of service that you do, what, what can we do extra to really um, sort of blow these people away when they walk through our doors. Some of the lessons that we learnt um, from the 2005 Lions Tour, which was a great precursor to the World Cup, were, were maybe not to uh, get carried away too much with building extra infrastructure, um, unless you've got some you know, firm bookings for you know, um, a lot of people coming into your place, maybe not look carefully before you start building marquees out the side and getting special licences. Um, these are really smart, well-travelled people that are making the trip here and they probably don't want to be sitting in a flappy tent on a cold night and, and they want to be inside. So I guess you just have to do what you can do in the premises that you have and, and just make the most of it over these six weeks. Another good tip I think for preparing for, for a big event like this, especially on the sort of the lead up to the semi-finals, quarter-finals and the final is, is maybe not to take bookings and, and just to get people to come through the door. You know, you've got to think of your real estate as, as, as being of prime importance and you want bums on seats, you know, from, from woe to go. So just take whatever you can through the door and, and just sort of wing it a little bit and, um, and people aren't in a big rush, you know, they're here for a good time so I, I think that's probably a good tip. One of the challenges that we have obviously is staff and a lot of um, sort of agency staff uh, that we sometimes rely on, uh, they'll be used for catering purposes so we're really going to have to be quite self-reliant and uh, I think everyone's going to have to be working double shifts and uh, t just working their best. Um, we, we could bring in and train some extra staff up for short periods of time, but that can be expensive and sort of time consuming. I just think we'll just have to make the best we can and just make sure everyone's at the top of their game.